John Hinderacker from uh, Powerline with us on the program. John, thank you so much for your time. Hi, Cam. Glad to be with you. You bet. Uh, glad to have you here. I, I, I got to say, this is a great, great blog post uh, you wrote today comparing uh, Bloomberg's uh, decision, his decision, apparently, you know, arbitrarily set our limits for uh, soda consumption. Uh, and, and, and really, again, his decision uh, to arbitrarily set our uh, the size of our magazines for our firearms. The it's it's the same impulse, and, and I, I I thought you just nailed it that it is coming from the very same place uh, in Bloomberg. This desire to control us uh, in, in so many different aspects of our life. Well, it really is, Cam, and and um, you know I I, I pointed out that uh, yesterday a judge in New York. Uh, threw out that rule that Mayor uh, Bloomberg imposed that you couldn't buy sugary drinks mm -hmm. in any container larger than 16 ounces. And the judge found that that rule, among, among other things, was arbitrary and capricious, which basically means irrational. And he pointed out that there's all kinds of drinks that are not banned in this rule that have got more calories, more sugar in them than, than the drinks that were addressed in the rule. And I, I pointed out that that's a lot like the assault weapons ban that the Democrats uh, keep trying to uh, implement. Assault weapons, so-called, are rarely, rarely ever used in homicides. Rifles are the least popular murder weapon. Five times as many people are killed with knives as rifles. So you, you have the same kind of irrationality of just singling out this one, one uh, random category of firearm and saying we're going to ban it. And, and the other point I made about the, uh, the soda ban, um, Judge um, uh, Tingling uh, said that the 16-ounce the restriction was arbitrary, capricious, made no sense because there's no restriction on refills. So under this rule, you can't buy a 32-ounce sugary drink, but you could buy two 16-ounce sugary drinks. You know, so it's just, it's just kind of crazy. And, and that applies just exactly to another of the Democrats' uh, favorite proposals, which is to ban all magazines that have got an average or above-average capacity. You know, a lot of their proposals uh, would ban any any magazine having uh, ten or more uh, rounds. Right, and it's the same thing. You know, just like somebody in New York could buy two 16 ounce sodas instead of one 32 ounce sodas. Somebody who wanted to fire a lot of rounds, whether it's at a shopping mall or a sh or, or a shooting range, uh, all you got to do is bring two magazines. You Absolutely. Know, so you have the same kind of arbitrary and, and irrational. Uh, proposals in the in the gun arena that uh, just yesterday got uh, struck down in the realm of uh, sugary beverages. A a absolutely right. Uh, and, you know, you say you draw two lessons from this, uh, that the battle over American Second Amendment rights has barely begun uh, and that gun rights enjoy a solid foundation as long as Barack Obama is not allowed to pack the Supreme Court with far left judges. You know, John, I, I, I wonder if if America's like, I, I don't know, maybe I've missed the uh, the people gathering in Times Square protesting this judge's decision, uh, demanding to have their drinks taken away from them. I don't know how much I can drink anymore. You know, <laughs> I've missed all of that. Uh, yeah. But I've seen a lot of people cheering the fact that they still are in charge of deciding what size their soda will be uh, at dinner. I, I have. Have we reached, can we reach a tipping point when it comes to this overbearing uh, intrusion into so many different aspects of our lives? Can we find a point where we say stop and we start pushing back? Well, Cam, I sure hope so. E everywhere you turn, you're seeing the government intruding into what used to be understood by everybody to be uh, your business, you know, your personal life, whether it's guns or Obamacare or what kind of beverages you can drink. Uh, you know, we see these intrusions every day, and certainly the NRA is among the leaders uh, in, in fighting back against this ever-encroaching uh, government power. And one thing I would point out, Cam, is that the Constitution doesn't say anything about sugary drinks. Right? right? There's no constitutional right to sugary beverages. There is a constitutional right to uh, keep and bear firearms. 
And so the kind of logic that was applied by this New York judge goes in spades for uh, firearms, which actually enjoy that specific constitutional protection under the Second Amendment. Talking with John Interacker. And, uh, John, uh, you know, you're up in uh, Minnesota where they've been, uh, again, trying to push a lot of these uh, same bills. What have you heard there? I mean, I know around the country it, we're seeing these stories that uh, President Obama's political capital is, uh, has been spent. Uh, Americans are, are siding with Republicans as opposed to Obama when it comes to these gun control legislations. Is the, uh, is the big desire uh, on the part of DFL uh, uh, leaders there to, to ram through gun control bills, has that started to fade a little bit? It has started to fade a lot. You know, I, I don't know about every other state, um, but, you know, Minnesota may be a blue state, but it's a blue state with a lot of hunters and with substantial rural areas, as well as a lot of gun owners like me who live in the metropolitan areas. And so right after Sandy Hook, uh, there were some really draconian bills introduced by Democrats into the Minnesota legislature, and there were some hearings in the legislature that were just packed with gun advocates. And people showed up, and, and they demonstrated various kinds of semi-automatic rifles and explained how kind of arbitrary and irrational some of these proposed laws were. And, and you know, the, the pro-gun folks really, really had the better of that, um, of that debate. And so what's happening now is that uh, those draconian proposals are just fading away, and the word out of the legislature is that the only thing that they're actually going to try to pass is a bill that has got certain tweaks to the background check uh, system, which is being promoted in part by the NRA. All right. Well, the devil's always in the details. You know, we, we are just getting a look now at Senator Schumer's uh, background check bill, which was introduced in the uh, Senate Judiciary Committee uh, last minute today. And I can tell you, John, uh, there are a lot of provisions tucked away in there that would make things awful uh, for gun owners around the country. Appreciate your time, sir. Unfortunately, we're almost out of time for the show this afternoon, but would love to have you back in the future. I'd love to come back, Cam. Thanks for having me.